Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back. I'm Jess and I'm going to give you a garden tour. It's been overdue. It is busting at the seams and it's about time I give you a tour. I am in Garden Zone 7B in the Piedmont of South Carolina. It is really bright, but I'm gonna do my best to give you a garden tour. We've got some things changing over. We have been harvesting a lot of peppers, cucumbers, making pickles, and I'm about to pick the green beans today too. Also, you'll notice behind me is a little chicken tractor, or a large chicken tractor. We have 31 meat birds growing up, and when they are feathered out, they're gonna go in this chicken tractor. But for now, I have a hen in there with about nine chicks that she's raised up. For now, she's gonna be in there to protect her from the hawks that have been flying around. I'm gonna go ahead and show you the garden. Let's go. And if you are new here, welcome. On my channel, I have been sharing my life and my journey in trying to keep life simple, making economical choices, and hopefully I can encourage you somewhere along the way. I really am excited about our garden this year. It is really beautiful. So we have been gardening for, I believe eight years or so, but this year is the first year that I started documenting and really kind of taking a hold myself. My husband usually has taken over the garden. Oh, look, we've got more flowers blooming. I planted just kind of wild flowers right here. It looks like we've got some poppies blooming and um, just a butterfly mix in here, which there was some basil that popped up in here too. I have a ton of basil right here. And I planted two nasturtiums. And these are cosmos here. They kind of broke off and ants took over them. And I don't know if they're gonna come back and bloom or not. And I'm trying something new to kind of kill the trim around the garden. Um, we do till and work our ground. Um, we've I've been wanting to maybe play with the no-dig method. I think it's very beneficial to keeping the ground undisturbed. I don't know, my husband really likes working the ground. He likes the gratification of that. And he feels like he's really doing something. So with that, we do need to amend the soil every year. We bring in chicken manure on it, maybe once a year in the fall for over the winter for spring planting. But this year, I've really taken over planting the garden really kind of have a more active role in the garden and designing the garden so we did some art trellises this year which I linked um, I did I did a video so I'll link that above for you to take a look um, I've always wanted archways and this was a simple easy economical cheap way to get some arches with oh I've got to be with uh, getting arches in the garden so I'm so excited I have some watermelons that I need to hammock up but come along I'll show you so first up, actually, I'll back up here. So these were our early spring cold weather things that are just hanging on. Uh, the days here in South Carolina, it is the end, uh, middle of June, end middle of June. <laughs> the broccoli is just like, please pick me, I'm done. It's too hot. It's been way too hot. Um, I had four seasons lettuce here. It's done. We're going to go ahead and pull that up. I'll probably just make some kale chips and just call it a day and just till up this garden and work, work it up. We just replanted some squash here and I'll probably do some zucchini too for a second um, wind of that. Here's our okra rose. We have four okra roll rows. And they're doing really well. I do need to probably thin them out and weed in between. Here are our red ripper peas. We have three rows of these. These are a bush pea and they really take over. Um, they're kind of planted pretty close together but <laughs> there are three rows here. Next we have our peppers. These are kind of our hotter peppers or specialty peppers. I have one jalapeno plant. Look at this. Look at these guys. In here. We could harvest these. Oh, it just came up. It was ready, I guess. Jalapenos. I love jalapenos. These are Thai peppers. 
They are super hot. My husband loves hot peppers. And so he has some of those to play with. I have this trellis system. We had a storm come through and this just helps keep these pepper plants sturdy with the wind. And here is cayenne pepper. And we usually pick these as green. Uh, sometimes we'll let them go red or let them redden in the house. We put those in with pickles. And you know, we've had a little bit of, I don't know, root rot. This guy is done. I think I'm gonna finally pull him up. Let's see. Let's see if we can see anything here. I don't know. I don't know what got these. Because it looks okay. I was gonna say we've had some root rot with our green beans. Uh, but that kind of I mean that looks okay. I'm just gonna I'll come back and tighten this up. And we have sweet banana peppers, four or five plants of these. I just harvested a whole bunch. They're doing really well. I just took off a whole bunch. Coming up on July, I've already started to, I just started to look at planning, kind of July planting of things. Got some things on my list. I like to look at the garden plan. I want to make my own garden planner that's by date instead of by, I don't know. I do better with, okay, it's June. What do I need to do? Okay, it's March. What do I need to do? Okay, it's December. What do I need to do? Not like I, I might have, I might need to go through my whole garden planning um, ideas with you guys. But here's what I mean with the green beans. We've had some just that are showing up dying here. And I pulled up the root, and it looked moldy. So. I guess root rot um, really stinks. I can't say we've ever had this happen before, but the majority of the beans look really good. Look at those guys. Oh my gosh. They are ready. I'll be coming back through and picking these. I love these green beans. These are a heirloom. Stringless pole bean, their Kentucky Blue Lake. And I have been just eating them. They're so good. They're kind of sweet. They're stringless, which means you don't have a string running up the spine of it. So good. <laughs> We just added, I did a trellis video for the green beans with just this fencing that we put up on each side, but the green, the beans just wanted to keep going, so we had this idea of putting up this, how is it, a PVC conduit or a plastic electrical conduit that bends, of course, so it just slipped over the rebar that we have here just slipped over top of that perfectly and then we bent it to connect on this side of the rebar and then I went ahead and put string across and I didn't the full intention is just to have you know some go over and not completely shade out the tomatoes I don't want to shade out the tomatoes that I have here um, I'll show you how I trellis the tomatoes as well. I'll put a video of that up too. I did pull off a whole bunch of uh, horn, great horned caliphoner, little, caterpillars. Well, I say whole bunch, there was like four of them. But I have, I know I have Cherokee purples here, the first two plants. And then we move into I did label these guys. Oh, Mr. Stripey. And 
then just the two Mr. Stripey. And then I have these smaller plants. Which is the Ruck Rutgers, another heirloom tomato. I think these two or three. And then starts my Romas. And Romas are determinate and you, it says you don't have to trellis them up, but I did anyway. They were getting, you know, kind of, they were getting really bushy. I've been pruning them, uh, not too intensely, you know, kind of on the ways of more skinny, or I guess more pruning on the bottom. Whatever leaves are touching the ground, you really want to prune, prune back any leaves that are touching the ground. Um, I'll maybe maybe I'll do a, um, a pruning video for tomatoes. Let's see if I can get this light to be a little better. There we go. I like sitting in here. So cool. <laughs> I almost stuck this jalapeno in my mouth. He's already. And what I'll do with green beans, um, I'm gonna can some. I've got a couple recipes and a book that I just got. The ball canning book and another preserving book I've been really enjoying. So far, um, I did put up some carrots, so that was kind of cool. Really interested uh, to do that. This year was the first year with carrots. We harvested them all last week. I kept them in the ground a little longer than usual. Just because our ground is so tough here, um, I think next year I'm going to do a raised bed for the carrots for sure. I better put this jalapeno in my pocket so I don't eat it. Now at the end of at the end of the beans, on each side I planted marigolds. They're so pretty. I like marigolds. They seem. I don't know, some people say they're such a, a beginner gardener plant, but I think I'll always have marigolds in my garden, no matter how long I've been gardening. Look how pretty that is, I just love it. And here's more tomatoes. I have dill at the end of this one. I just planted more dill. I almost harvested, or we actually had to go buy some dill because I didn't want to harvest too much of my own yet because I have tons of pickles coming. So I know I have, this is aroma, and then I have golden tomatoes, and then I forget what else. Guys, look at those. They've been green for a while. I think they'll be green, and it'll be seeming like I'm waiting forever for tomatoes, and then all of a sudden it'll just blow up. So these are the golden, um, let's see, golden jubilee tomatoes. I need to get in here and weed, guys. These weeds. Look at these romas. That's interesting. Romas, these are um, a stewing. I want to make stew and... Um, I guess stewed tomatoes and pasta sauce and stuff. I do want to try my hand at salsas. I'm the only one in my home that eats raw tomatoes, unless my mom is visiting. <laughs> uh, what are these guys? These guys are fantastic. These are just fantastic. Large crop producing. I'll go back there. We have so many ants. It's like not a normal day if you don't get by ant, get bit by ants here. Look at, I want to do my tomatoes differently this year. I do watch Roots and Refuge on YouTube, um, Jess and Maya, and Jess wrote a book. I've been referring to her book a little bit this year. I just got it, and um, she trellises her tomatoes on the cattle panels that I've used to arc with but if she keeps it she keeps it horizontal like I do have the green beans and really heavily prunes the tomatoes with 
one or two branches going up and then weaving in and out of the squares of the panel. So I really want to try that. Though I like this. I do like this, but I like to try new things too. And then of course I have my cherry tomatoes down here. They're definitely an indeterminate variety of tomatoes. They will just keep going and keep growing. Alright, um, you gotta... Alright, come check out the winter squash. So, this is the first time I planted winter squash. And I thought I bought butternut squash. And only butternut squash. Until this happened, which I don't believe that I need to be hammocking these. I was just reading in Jess's book last night, actually, that there are many variety of squash that I don't need to hammock them. So, But I was like, gosh, you know, these are a little different than these. I've got, oops, I've got that butternut squash there, and here's one on the ground. These are clearly butternut, right? Like clearly butternut. And, um, and I was just thinking, come on, focus. I was just thinking to myself, like what in the world is this thing? So I was looking up, I typed in green butternut squash and then, so some of them can start off green, but not that green. And then, I just, yeah, I typed in green butternut squash and then a picture of that showed up and it was honey nut, which is smaller than butternut, or I guess more sh is short, but it's in the same family as the butternut, but it's called honey nut and it's actually packed with more flavor and more nutrition than its larger co cousin, the butternut. So anyway, I was pretty excited to learn that, but um, maybe I'll just keep him in his little sock for now. When we walk through, so this is the first, this is the first arc past the beans where I have the winter squash. And they'll go up those. And I did learn that they take right around 100 days to harvest. Next to these guys are the, um, the two arches of the cucumbers. This is the archway that we planted a little further apart, so there's five foot in between the arches here we did five foot and then this is four foot so the arch is a little lower as you can see and a little wider i like that we'd be getting tons of cucumbers out of here and just look at them they're doing so well they're blowing up and this is that heirloom white cucumber this is a new variety that i've tried this year Um, so far, good. Uh, it said that it was a table and pickling. Um, maybe I've not picked them early enough, but the table, just eating it raw was a little bitter to me. But maybe they were too mature. Maybe I need to try um, a younger guy like this, this one. These are good. I think what I've learned so far with these is I'm going to plant them on the outside. They're on the inside here, and I believe I'm going to plant them on the outside. All right, here are, so here's our tomatoes on the outside of the beans, and here are our bell peppers. And I trellis these, or supported these. I just weaved through, let's see, I'll get better lighting here. Oh, look, this one's starting to turn. I was able to enjoy my first cherry tomatoes out of my garden this year yesterday. So anyway, we weave through. So you'll have two lines that go and they're weaved on the opposite side. They're on the opposite side of the plant on the base. And then you do another one and you wanna do it as high as the plant is with some room on top, but basically, so when the wind blows, 
these just help support up and I just harvested a ton of peppers off of these red pepper plants though they didn't turn red yet but they were on there and they were so big um, I wanted to go ahead and just pick them so we did but these are all green peppers and then a different variety of green pepper and then these are red peppers I believe those are red peppers too this might be a um, just a regular green and then I have eggplant and look at this basil that I planted here it's doing so well I just have random herbs around the garden and here's another Thai pepper plant just randomly placed in here you can hear the hawk I had to run out and save the chicks from the hawk this morning they're flying too far away I'd, otherwise I'd show you I need to weed man all these ants too if you have advice on ant control let me know all right so what do I have here I have yellow squashes yellow summer squash there's how many mounds three mounds and then two mounds of zucchini and they have taken over a huge in here and you know you have to get up right on top of them to really see what kind of fruit you have because I miss them all the time harvested quite a bit of squash already this year. I love the blooms. Oh, and there's the ants. But as far as I can tell, they don't really hurt the plants, the ants. Here's some zucchini. Get that guy out of there. He's ready. I just break them off. That guy, yummy. I like them young. Look at this watermelon, you guys. Got a couple more over here. I need to get these guys in a little hammock. I'm so excited for these. So this will be the first time that I trellis watermelon. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I figured I'd give it a try. See if I could get it to work. I really do need to hammock these up. This guy is definitely big enough to put in a t-shirt. So I need to do that. And I think next year I'll put these on the outside as well. And look at that cantaloupe. Look at that cantaloupe. It'll be ready soon. So here's the back side of our garden. Two arches, these are Clemson sweet watermelon. And then I have, which I ended up with four plants right here, guys. And I've been pruning vines off. Uh, I don't really need that many watermelons. But uh, cantaloupe, I have two plants over there. So that's just two plants. I try to control them to one going up each side. and then just weave them through. Look how cute that is. That is the cutest thing. All right, so now we're in the back side. Oh, this wind. So we're back side. Zucchini and cucumbers again. And I've got these dill plants. I did plant a new dill over here. I don't know if I covered that yet. This guy right here. Thank you guys so much for coming along and visiting with me. Let me know what you want to hear next. If you found this video helpful or enjoyable, please give it a thumbs up and share me with your friends. And I'll see you guys again next time.